Hello and welcome. Uh, please take your seats so we can get started with the business meeting portion of today's events as we look forward to our program, Democracy, Demographics, and Destiny, all in the details. It is my pleasure to formally call the 39th Annual Meeting of the Members of Philanthropy New York to order. There are specific actions we must take and information we must provide to you as required by both New York State law and our own bylaws at the annual meeting. And I fit right in as a lawyer, just up my alley. <laughs> in order to meet those requirements, we are going to go first, we are going to first provide our audit report and governance and nominating status. We will then ask you to vote on our new board member nominations. Both Ronna Brown, PNY's president, and I will make a few remarks about the work of philanthropy in New York over the past year. We will then close our formal meeting and turn to our much anticipated program of activities. Thank you to the Paley Center for Media and the City Foundation for graciously hosting our annual meeting this year. We'd also like to thank our sponsors, y Yada Connect, our gold sponsor, Be Live, CBiz Benefits and Insurance Services, and Condon O'Meara, McGinty, and Donnelly, our silver sponsors. It is now my privilege to introduce Jane O'Connell, President of the Altman Foundation and Vice Chair of the PNY Board. To join me on the stage, Jane will take us through our quorum requirements, the minutes, and the board report. Good afternoon. These are very difficult assignments. Um, mine is even more difficult than Mike's. Um, this is all what I've been told to say. So, members may participate in the annual meeting by proxy or by attending in person. To have a quorum for this meeting, we need 10% of the voting members represented, or 28 members, either in person or by proxy. We have 16 proxies that I actually have in my hand. Estimate the number in the room I'm supposed to do, 30. Does that sound good? Um, please turn your att attention to the draft minutes of the 38th annual meeting. These were distributed along with the notice of the annual meeting sent in April, and I'm sure you brought them all with you. Are there any corrections? May I have a motion to accept the minutes? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I vote the proxies in favor. The minutes of the 38th annual meeting are now approved. We will now present our financial report to you. All the necessary information for this financial report is found in the auditor's report to the Board of Directors, dated February 27, 2018, prepared by Con Condon, O'Meara, McGinty, and Donnelly, and accepted by the Board at its March 5, 2018 meeting. A copy of the auditor's report was sent with the notice of this meeting and was also with the materials out front. Our Board Chair will summarize and that report right now. Mike? Thank you, Jane. Just to make, make it clear, Jerry Watson, our wonderful outgoing treasurer, was unable to be here, uh, but uh, uh, you're, you're not just in my good hands, but in, certainly in hers. As noted in the audit, Philanthropy New York closed 2017 on solid financial footing with a little over $7.9 million in net assets. Core activities in the organization produced a surplus of 264,000. The board continues to maintain a six-month reserve fund. Our revenue also continues to have a strong income stream for our, from our physical sponsorship activities. For more than 11 years, we have provided comprehensive, comprehensive fiscal sponsorship services to our members in support of their work. In addition, fiscal sponsorship is an important source of revenue for PNY. Anyone with any questions about these financials? I can't say kind of seeing none, because I can't see any of you, but <laughs> hearing none. Um, if you have any questions, talk to me, uh, and you don't want to raise them now, talk to me later, talk to Jerry, uh, or talk to Gene Hawes, our incoming treasurer. I will now ask the co-chairs of the Governance and Nominating Committee, Kyung Yoon and Pam Foster, to join me on stage. Uh, Kyung Yoon is the executive director of the Korean American Community Foundation, and Pam Foster is the COO of Co Impact. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon. Philanthropy New York has a very dedicated and energetic board. 
and each member is committed to ensuring that this organization is a vital and important resource for the philanthropic community in New York. The Governors and Nominating Committee is responsible for nominating new candidates onto the board, and the committee is comprised of both current and former PNY board members, and it is uniquely qualified to determine the leadership needs of PNY. And we'd like to thank the members of this committee. Doug Bauer, the Clark Foundation, Anissa Camadoli Costa, the Tiffany and Company Foundation, Diana Davenport, the Commonwealth Fund, Liesl Lynn, the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, Philip Lee, Robert Sterling Clark Foundation, Paula Love, Inherent Group, Leticia Peguero, Andres Family Fund, Liz Sack, the Cricket Island Foundation, and our ex officio member, board chair, Mike Pratt, Sherman Foundation. Thank you all for your great work this year. <laughs> Before we turn to nominations, I, we want to take a moment to thank the board members who have completed their terms. Um, first, we thank Yvonne Moore and Jerry Watson, who have been extraordinary board members in a lot of ways, contributing um, a lot. Uh, PNY will thank them more fully on a later occasion because they couldn't be here with us today. Two of our departing members are present. Uh, Steve and Ken, will you please join us on stage so we can, as we tell the members about your service? Steve Foster. President and CEO of the Overbrook Foundation, has served on the board since 2012. He served on the 2016 Strategic Planning Committee, chaired the Governance and Nominating Committee during his time on the board, and he served on the 2016, 2017, and 2018 Annual Meeting Committees, been very busy, um, as well as on the Finance Committee. And Ken Montero, Vice President, Secretary, and General Counsel at the Ford Foundation, has also served on the board since 2012. He served on the Audit Committee and is co-chair of the Public Policy Committee, which during this last year took three public positions. He served as a key member of the board reviewing all PNY bylaws. Thank you again, Ken. <laughs> um, he's an active member of the PNY uh, Foundation Lawyers Network Group and has spoken at several PNY programs over the years. Um, we're going to invite uh, Mike to come up and join us for a photo as we hand and the... Provide you with Yes. Gifts okay. for them. Yes. Very small token <laughs> yes. of our appreciation. Heavy though. Yeah. <laughs> and it says New York City, which we're we being are. asked to scooch over for a photo. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay, I think you can continue. Yep, okay, continue. Yep, okay. Uh, so we also have four new slots to fill on the board for this next uh, three-year term and four board members who have been nominated for a second term. All eight nominees require a vote of the membership in order to elect them to the board. I will ask that all candidates stand when their name is called. Uh, please hold your applause. Our four returning board members nominated for their second three-year term are Eric Eckholt, Anna Oliveira, Pat Swan, and Jean Hawes, um, I should give their affiliations. Eric is at the Credit Suisse America's Foundation, Anna at the New York Women's Foundation, Pat Swan at the New York Community Trust, and Jean at the Wellspring Philanthropic Fund. Mm -hmm. And our four new candidates nominated for their first three-year term are Kenneth Austin, the Wallace Foundation, Amy Freitag, the JM Kaplan Fund, Maria Matola, New York Foundation, and Jason McGill, Arcus Foundation. On the recommendation of the Governance and Nominating Committee, I move for the election of these individuals. Do I hear a second? All those present who are in favor of electing these individuals, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are the proxies being voted? Jane. Wonderful. Uh, any opposed? The motion passes. Many thanks and congratulations to our new board members. Thank you. In the interest of time and to also 
frustrate your cheering sections that I know each board member has brought today to uh, violate the rules of holding your applause. I'd like the whole board to stand and be thanked for their wonderful year of service and uh, to recognize them. So please stand. In other words, I'm not going to list your names. There you are. At the March 5th, 2018 board meeting, the executive officers for the 2018-2019 term were elected. Jane O'Connell and Kyung Yoon will be our two vice chairs. Jean Hawes will be our treasurer. And Pat Swan will be our secretary. And I'll be serving my second year of the, of the two-year term as board chair. I'd, li I'd like to now ask PNY's president, Rana Brown, to deliver her report. I like the applause before I speak. I appreciate that. Um, thanks, Mike. And it's really good to see folks here today. We so appreciate you joining us for our annual meeting. What I usually do at the annual meeting is give you a really brief summary of what we've done in the prior year. But I'm actually not going to do that today. Oops, I went too far. Right there. Um, but if you want to get a quick highlight, a set of highlights from what PNY did in 2017, you can look for this. We have a few copies out there. It's also posted on our website today. It's our annual report, and it gives you a great summary of what we accomplished really based on our strategic plan. What I want to do instead is to ask all of you to just take a moment, think about your own foundation, and think about the broader sector, and think about this moment in our country's history. To say the obvious, 2017 saw enormous changes at the federal level. We had tax reform at the end of the year. Um, we had changes in policy around immigration. We had the failure to adequately prepare or budget for the 2020 census. We had the changes to the estate tax the rollback of regulations and um, leaving uh, you know, international agreements that were focused on preserving and protecting our environment. And that is just the beginning of the list. At the same time in 2017, on a far more encouraging note, we saw substantial change and growth for both nonprofits and foundations in directly addressing and speaking out on racism, on gender inequity, on economic inequality, all issues that have been pervasive and not adequately addressed by us for far too long. PNY is nonpartisan, so that means we do not get involved in electoral politics. But it does not mean that we don't have a voice. And in fact, as a nonprofit organization, we have the right, and we think you have given us the responsibility to address the issues that first impact our sector, the broad nonprofit sector. And secondly, and we are finding our voice here, the issues that speak directly to our organizational values, issues around inclusion, fairness, and equity. That is why last year in 2017, Philanthropy New York took three formal positions on the Johnson Amendment, the estate tax, and on the tax code reforms. And you're going to hear more about those in our chair's remarks in just a moment. But the sector broadly has an important role at this moment in time. And we see our role first and foremost to support the mission of our members and the nonprofit grantee partners that you value. We also want to support you in using all of your non-grant-making resources, including your institutional voice, appropriately, of course, and ideally in concert with others. As you navigate these changes, as our entire sector navigates these changes, we want to be very clear that Philanthropy New York is here as a resource for you. To that end, last year we worked very hard to listen and sometimes anticipate 
um, and provide the kind of programming and convening that we believe you were asking for. We deepened our own focus as an organization on racial equity. We provided additional resources and opportunities for learning for all of our members about how to support advocacy, both your grantees and your own. And we feel confident that there's a lot more we can do. So what we're asking of you today as you listen to the conversations around democracy and movement building, to think about what is it that you need from us, both your own institution and all of our institutions together. Tell us what you want to see from us over this next year, and we will do our best to deliver that to you. We see our relationship with you really as reciprocal. You inspire and support and drive us, and we organize and support and nurture your ideas. In short, we are really grateful to be in partnership with each and every one of you, and we thank you for your ongoing support. So with that, I'm now gonna ask Mike Pratt to come back for his remarks, thank you. Thank you, Rana. I completely agree with you that in this era, coming together is more important than ever, and Philanthropy New York is our essential resource to do just that. And I also want to just pick up on your emphasis on racial equity, which the board itself has been engaging in, in a very thoughtful, ongoing way. So I think that both as a small group on the board and as a larger community, we are wrestling with important issues in a really responsible way. As Rana and I wrote in our introduction to the 2017 annual report, last year was, to understate it, intense and trying. PNY was challenged to figure out how to best support our member organization's missions while living in the midst of vast national policy change and political acrimony. Our first goal is always to support our members' work. And this year provided many opportunities as our members reframed strategies and dug down even deeper into existing ones. For many of our members, it was a year of questioning strategies and rethinking what can be most effective now at this critical moment. Despite these challenges, Philanthropy New York has made progress on many fronts this year, and I'd like to elaborate a little bit on the policy positions that Rana uh, referred to. The first came in March 2017 in response to calls from the President and many in Congress to, quote, destroy the Johnson Amendment and bring partisanship into the nonprofit sector. Philanthropy New York's board, with deep member input, for which we appreciate, approved a statement opposing the repeal of the Johnson Amendment. In November 2017, as tax reform moved forward in Congress, it became clear that the legislation would include a rise of the standard deduction that would affect the charitable deduction and then uh, disincentivizing charitable giving. It also looked like the legislation might eliminate the estate tax altogether, another tax provision that incentivizes charitable giving. While PNY already had a statement in favor of defending the charitable deduction, the board approved a new statement that broadened and specified our position to say that we would oppose caps on the charitable deduction and would support a universal charitable deduction for all filers, not just those who itemize. At the same time, PNY approved a statement opposing the elimination of the estate tax and any future increases in its exemption levels. We were a little nervous about that. We got out to you, our members, and got back nothing but positive responses on that as well. Well, with these official positions, PNY supported partners like United Philanthropy Forum, Council on Foundations, and National Council of Nonprofits in their own advocacy efforts, and conducted our own informational outreach to New York's entire congressional delegation. In the end, the Johnson Amendment and the estate tax still stand, and the charitable deduction has been compromised, and we must now work even harder to advance a universal charitable deduction. And our work does not end there. In March of this year, Philanthropy New York approved an official statement urging Congress 
and the administration to devote sufficient resources to the 2020 census, to put planning and preparations back on track, and to resist calls for untested, unnecessary questions on citizenship that will, would decrease participation and accuracy. The philanthropic sector needs to continuously integrate the unexpected into the work we do. And I'm proud of the work Philanthropy New York does to help its members do just that. In the past year in particular, I've been encouraged by how much more our members have been willing to stand up in these tumultuous and disorienting times. We have all had to check our moral compasses, and it's happily that has really brought us together as a community rather than driving us apart. I also want to, at this moment, through these trying and difficult year, I really want to note how great our staff has been uh, in being quick on their feet, deep in their research, and responsive to uh, our members' needs. So if I could, and I can't see you out there, but if I could ask all the staff to stand up uh, and be acknowledged for your wonderful, wonderful work through the year. There, yes. Typically, typically, there are two people in the room, her staff, and the rest. Oh, there they are. Oh, there we are. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're working, which is what they do. And they work today to make this a great event, and they work all year long to make all these other things that we do so great. On that note, I will end by saying that 2018 is shaping up to be another extraordinarily eventful year for Philanthropy New York. I look forward to appearing at next year's annual meeting when my tenure as chair comes to an end to report on the progress we make in the coming year together. So with that, I want to bring our formal uh, meeting to a close. Is there any further business to come before this meeting? Hearing none, I declare the 39th, isn't that cool? <laughs> Magic. I, hearing none, I declare the 39th annual business meeting of the members of Philanthropy New York adjourned. <laughs>